Hey and welcome to High Body Fire, a discussion about the future impact of this week's world and tech news leaning towards the singularity. I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Waters. This is High 45. Beer. We, Drink beer. Oh yeah. We've we'll changed it up a bit this week. We're going to do uh, two stories. Then we're going to talk about a, uh, an idea relating to the singularity. Then we're going to do our last two stories. It's going to be kind of cool. Uh, the two stories that I have are about that we've done the first picture of a planet orbiting another star. Which is just awesome. This picture is amazing. And then the next one is that we've got a bionic cat. Yay, cyborg cat. <laughs> so it'll be great. You know, no. you're too. Um, MRI scans predicting your behavior. That's scary, but cool. Um, and a German satellite is actually taking 3D images of the Earth. Very Hell apparently. yeah. Which and what was the singularity topic? Oh yeah, we're going to talk about the idea of cognitive surplus. Which is kind of cool. That I mean, instead of using the... Well, we'll talk about it more as we yep. get there. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> oh, well. Um, Started off. Yeah, I'll start it off. Well, this is pretty great. This is awesome. I'm not sure if you've seen this picture. I'll, uh, I'll put it up for you right now. It's episode 21, by the way. Oh, yeah, episode 21. For, yeah, whatever. You work it out. Yeah. <laughs> this picture is phenomenal. Put it up now. This is the, the star right there. And, uh, yeah, have a look. Wow. There's, the, there's the little planet just there. Oh, my God. I haven't seen it yet. Have so a look. <laughs> See? And there's the planet. That is so cool. Oh, That's another wow. star. It's actually that good resolution. That's like that's not an artist. No, no, that's it. it that's actually it. That's the actual picture that's pretty of cool. a star, and then they can see this planet, which is eight times the size of Jupiter, orbiting another star. But it's probably incredible. clearly not habitable at that oh, no, size. Not whatsoever. But I mean, come on, talk about steps. That this is at the same level as <laughs> so many other things. That some of the other like things that were great there, like you know the first picture of a molecule taken, which here you go, another great picture. Yeah, that's another And then um, the Hubble Space Deep Field. I mean, it's. They're, they're the same line. I mean, this just got discovered. I have, I have more questions. Was that from the Kepler satellite or was that something else? Mm, I'm not sure. No, but they found it a while back, actually, and then it's only just been in 2010 to actually um, get the picture of it, I think. Also, oh, been like doing analysis on them? I think so. Da, 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 da. I'm just looking at the Wikipedia article right now. But, um, yeah, yeah the discovery. There's the, uh, there's the Kepler satellite that's discovered. Yeah, what it think? was discovered in 1998. This is the first picture. Oh, that so. was. Okay. Well, yeah, there's the, Kep the Kepler satellite that's been discovering, like, yeah, like they just had a new batch recently, of like seventeen new satellites, and so oh, oh, planets, planets, satellites, the same things. <laughs> but now it's like uh, what four hundred and thirty odd planets have been discovered. Yeah, and I was looking this up, and apparently before, oh god, it's either like ninety two or ninety five. Things were like ninety two. Before then, we hadn't discovered any, like had no confirmed proof of any extrasolar planets. It's so recent. That's pretty amazing. That's 18 years. Yeah, I think it was 18 years ago. Yeah. It was 92. That is just bizarre. And like, and now we've actually got pictures of extra solar planets. Like, it's pretty intense. That's just crazy. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe the resolution of this thing. That I, It is awe-inspiring. It's awesome. It's no, literally it awesome. It's... Really big camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's kind of cool. I mean, it, in relating to... Um, like, you know, we're, we're really extending our view of the universe and stuff. I mean, that we can now get pictures of what is this, is the pentacene ring, and then we've also got pictures of planets orbiting other stars with little twinkly bits up in the sky. And yeah, it's that's still primitive. <laughs> it is, but we're getting that 18 years, we've already come that far, they're actually confirming our planets, now we've got pictures of them. I mean, next 18 years, think about what's going to be there, we're going to discover habitable planets, get pictures of the damn thing. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, I'm not sure about that. It's going to be hard. They're very bright. Well, they're, don't they basically work out the habitability based on... Um, they can work. Yeah, they can look a zone. At, no, they they work well, yeah, the zone as well. But they look at what chemicals radiate back from the light. Oh, okay. Cause yeah, that, that yeah. It's experiments where you can work out based on what light radiates back, and I guess which shift it goes to work out what chemicals are in there. Cool. I think. Yeah. Well, I think yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Pretty sweet though. Yeah. So that's my quick picture, quick story. Check it out. It's really cool. Epicness. Like it. There you go. That's a picture. Cool. Singularity Hub article for this week. Da, da, da. We seem to do one every week. Uh, MRI scans are better at predicting your behavior than you are. They've actually uh, found that by studying blood flow, blood flow to the precuneus and medial prefrontal cortex of the brain. <laughs> cool. Uh, basically, they can accurately predict behavior um, about 70 75% of the time. Right. But this, uh, this study was really, if I remember correctly, the study was really dodgy. It only used 10 women and, uh, and 10 men. Um, they basically, I think they got them to look at something to do with like sunscreen or something, and uh, then they tried to track their behavior, and they worked out that um, they could actually predict by looking at the brain, doing fMRI, fMRI, uh, fMRI scans, they could work out 
whether that behavior would actually stick with them. So whether oh, actually, okay. so so whether this group of people would actually use sunscreen or not. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they they'd like make them play with sunscreen or like look at different ones they can see if it would um, actually be. They were showing public service announcements about the importance of wearing sunscreen. Oh. Like while they while they're in the fMRI, FMRI machine. Yeah. And then they, but then they they required them to actually fill in surveys the next week whether they use sunscreen or not. Well, that's cool. And like, they can very, actually predict yeah. it. Well, yeah, they, they reckon that it was, they could actually predict who would, um, you know, stick to that behavior and who wouldn't. Right. But it's a very biased and very small sample set. Um, but it's, it, it, like, this article is basically saying there's big impl implications because a lot of people, um, they're thinking they could use this, this to um, actually scan children while they're being taught in schools. See if it actually sticks. Yeah, see if what, how they're teaching and how they're doing Dude. it is actually retaining. If you could do it yourself, like, yeah. I'd love to have that right there that I'd read some stuff, like visit Khan Academy and then see that, it yeah, you're really not world. picking this up. <laughs> like yeah. your whole thing of watching a video on one side yeah. and reading text. See if other. it actually picks up. Doubt it. I think it would. Um, <laughs> they're also saying that it could be used for um, like marketing costs and advertising oh, yeah. if that's being used and also security. Um, Advertising would be spectacular. <laughs> God. Yeah, if it actually really sticks, then yeah. Geez, well, they've been trying to do that for a while. I think. I mean, yeah, I'm pretty certain they have that. Like they put people in MRIs and then have the ad play. Yeah, it'd be expensive to do though. Jesus. Yeah, and then uh, when I, I I read this article and it, it triggered me, I'm, I I read a comment. I'm the only one there at the moment. Sad. Um, <laughs> about how there was a similar study, um, it was in a wide article, yeah. but how they could actually determine what decision you would make um, up to seven seconds before you were actually aware of making that decision. It's just bizarre. Just hooked up to your brain. And the idea is with this is... um about free will. Yeah, <laughs> no free will, which kind of sucks. Um, but a further idea is if we start getting hard overlays, like, you know, the tech glasses, whatever you want to call them, and if we can put in some kind of fMRI, you know, brain scanning thing with that, you can actually tell in real time what ha what's happening in the brain while you're actually doing activities, like while you're browsing something or reading content or whatever. You, you link that up, you make that a consumer device, you link that to like, you know, millions, billions yeah. of people. You can learn a hell of a lot about the brain that way. Yeah. Well, from, especially from the outside in. Yeah. yeah. Well, especially as we're saying, like looking at ads and all of that, that if you actually just did it with any content. Mm -hmm actually see what they're taking. I mean, come on, like, you talk about an analytics for your site, that you had people using it, like, with ad tech blasts, and you see that, well, they're only picking up this and this, they don't care about this and this. It's like, like advertising, I mean, come oh, on, geez. just the actual website. Or your brain, like, analytics for your brain. Yeah, analytics <laughs> for your brain. You pull it, yeah, you pull up the analytics software, it's like, well, they'd actually retain this much in these people's brains, yeah. not in this much, so yeah, that's you should it. try something else. You can see, well, because that's what a website analytics now is, just where you're clicking, yeah. get a better one, get the direct brain interface, get actually the analytics well, going there. Well, I was thinking more, and this is probably inevitable, but whatever, mm. you can't stop it, like Brave New World, so a scenario where if the computer, if you're linked up to the computer and it knows what you want, what decision you're going to make up to yeah. seven seconds before you make it, and you link that to some kind of recommendation system, yeah, it, it could just you. it feeds you information, and you're just in a perpetual state Catatonic of state of, like, <laughs> of bliss. Yeah, <laughs> it knows what you want before you even know you want it, and yeah. it gives it to you at the time that you want it exactly. Right, that's it. That's when we're the perfect system. That's why we're not the system anymore. The system becomes a system. It's a little bit. Blah. It's kind of cool, really. It's yeah. heaven. It's everything you've ever wanted. I mean, well, come on. You think of what actually heaven, like the, what people say heaven is. Fuck that. It sounds nightmarish. That's what it'd be. But it, it sounds sad, but when. He, when it, when it happens, everyone will love it. Oh, that's it. Well, it, it is inevitable, really. <laughs> anyway. Like, it sounds like a sad system, like humans... It happens with everything, though. Like, I mean, we've just got this massively egotistical complex going on right now, thinking that we're the special, we're the top of the food chain, it'll always be that way. And it really won't. We'll integrate yeah. into a system the same way that every other biological creation before us, or every platform we've built upon. But at least we'll be happy. Well, that's it. We'll be, well, <laughs> unless it's, you know, kind of the... Dollhouse had a great one, Joss Whedon's one, that um, in keeping you in a perpetual state of terror and fear, you would actually make their brain work faster. So you can overclock everyone by making them just perpetually <laughs> scared at all times. Not, not oh, pleasant, man. because when you're pleasant, you're calm and you're relaxed. You don't want that. You want to be flooding it with emotions and... That's all. The perpetual machine torture, machine really. overclocking our biology. Yeah, that's it. Our brains. Of perpetual wow. state of torture. I mean, we've done it to chickens and cows for long enough. Why not do it to humans? Get their cognitive function <laughs> faster, damn it! Jeez.